I just want to accelerate technology use in corporate America. I think there was this great period when we had like the initial like code revolution where like a lot of companies built their own internal systems. We then called those like archaic, like traditional systems because they were written with like a lot of code and like they were really hard to maintain. So we moved to SaaS. Now I think with the dawn of no code and like the, the commoditization of development and like it being a lot cheaper, it's a lot easier to now do that again and like rebuild your own tools and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hello. So that's how I start podcasts. We will learn your methods, Harry. Welcome. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, just uh, relaxing here in Buenos Aires. Uh, we've had some fun chatting before the call, so yeah. Excited oh. to be here. Yeah, cool. I'm excited also with this chat. So uh, let's start with uh, your story. Uh, tell us, uh, like, uh, tell us your story. <laughs> really sure. um, so like, uh, I went down like a little bit of like a non-traditional route to get where I am. Um, dropped out of university when I was 19. Worked for uh, one of the biggest like Android development agencies in in London at the time uh, called Tangier. Uh, one of our clients was uh, Gumtree, which is a sub company of eBay. So got like quite a lot of exposure to like corporate and enterprise companies at, at a young age. Decided mm -hmm. that I didn't want to do that after a year. So I went back to uh, where I used to live and started working in a hotel. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, after somebody was very rude to me one day, uh, I said the classic, I'm throwing in the towel. Screw you guys. Uh, I'm going to go make websites. And um Needless to say, being very uh, uh, young and, and hopeful, I thought, oh, if I sell a website for 500 bucks a day, I'll be a millionaire by the end of the week. Not really realizing, you know, clients and like back and forth and the revisions <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, so in 2018, I formed a Webflow agency uh, that primarily did website design and development in the Webflow platform uh, for, custom, for clients, mainly bespoke work. So we were really big on like custom design. Did that for about four years and then for some reason decided that I wanted to start a second agency. This time one more suited around my personal skills, which are like systems and processes. Um, and, uh, and, and that one kind of like slowly grew. In the end, I, I moved from running a Webflow design agency to now the agency that I have, which is uh, automation uh, processes and operations. So we work with corporate America to help implement uh, workflows and AI solutions into like their day to day systems. And then we also help them rebuild uh, SaaS applications that they use inside a tool called Coda, meaning that they save, you know, hundreds of thousands on enterprise license will help them figure out like how to do the work that they're doing faster, more efficiently and have fun whilst doing it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that, that's really it really the, the, the second agency kind of blew up uh and grew a lot faster than the first one so uh i decided to just follow the the kind of energy of that one really cool cool so you said after the android agency you worked at a hotel uh yes yeah, yeah, yeah. What's a hotel? <laughs> interesting. interesting and how old were you back then uh so again like around like 20 21 yeah cool cool interesting i also love the stories because my story is kind of like normie so uh, I was in the tech university, I learned development and I'm <laughs> joined the company as a developer. So it's not that much uh, uh, interesting back then, but I really admire when people like uh, changing the path or like switching from one thing to another. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Thanks, man. That your mind is pretty flexible. I, I'm from a very small like seaside country uh, side um, place. So like unfortunately the only jobs you can get are like in hotels and, and stuff like that but you, you <laughs> learn a lot from like public facing jobs i think like how to talk to people you know yeah yeah uh, i can imagine that it's useful because yeah. again i didn't have the job so i only have this uh bubble let's say like development bubble uh, and now i'm trying to learn like how to talk to people outside so that that's makes what sense. I'm... i think it, i think you can do either one at either end uh if you want I kind of, part of me wishes I'd stayed at university, you know, I don't know what kind of Harry I'd, or what kind yeah. of version I'd be of me if I, if I'd stay, but yeah. So, uh, so when you, uh, launched the Webflow agency, uh, I didn't get so, uh, easy up a ground, like designing or did you coach like in this agency or. Yeah. Uh, yeah so 
So I was a front-end developer. Oh, uh, no. I wasn't very good, uh, if I'm really <laughs> honest with myself, but I knew enough HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to get my get by. Mm -hmm. Then I switched to product designer um, mm -hmm. for the web agency. And then now I've switched to, I guess I still have all the skills that I had, but now I'm more about like uh, automation and like no code development. Nice. However, I am now starting to learn how to fr code front end and back end again, as I want to <laughs> be able to like do it fully, you know, so. Nice. Yeah, today it's uh, probably much more easier, especially as you have already in the grounds and you know what you want to build. Yeah, that and I think it can really do like complement design skills. And especially if you want to yeah. just have fun and build like your own side project, I, it, I think it's a much easier to be able to like build the MVP yourself than like have to look for like a technical co-partner or like, you know, you just want to test ideas at the end of the day. Um, yeah, yeah, know. definitely. Yeah, it's cool. Um, also, one thing that you didn't mention, uh, you're doing a YouTube channel, right? Yes, I always forget. I always forget. Yeah, and when you started and uh, why you started and uh, how it's going. Yeah, um, so I think like a lot of young guys uh, in their early 20s, a lot of the things that you get told to do are like, get a portfolio, go make content online, you know, mm -hmm. make, make some noise. I'd always been recording these like little Instagram videos on my phone. Nice. And, um, and one day my ex-girlfriend said to me like, you know, you love making videos. Why don't you make a YouTube channel? And it was like this big light bulb moment. And I was like, I've always wanted to make a YouTube channel. So, and I'd always done it when I was younger and stuff. And so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll give it a go again. This time, properly try. So I started uploading uh, weekly vlogs on things that I was doing in my business. If you go back and look at the very nice. first vlog, it has nothing to do with what I was doing. I was just lifting concrete weights in <laughs> my garage because it was locked down. I was chugging a protein shake and telling the audience how stressed I was or something like that, right? Um, okay. And like, you know, I'd get fucking buzzed off of like 100 views, dude. Like, it would get 100 views and I'd be like, yes, that's the goal. Next video, next week, you know. Nice. I, I did that for like a year, year and a half consistently, like nearly every week making a video. Um, and now the channel has kind of like, as, as it's evolved and grown, pivoted more to these like hyper niche videos about particular problems that our audience have or like things that have happened in our agency and trying to share that knowledge. Some of our best performing videos, for example, are like um, I took the design joy business model and applied it to my own design agency, got a great result. And then I just kind of tell everybody in the video like how I did it and, and how they can do it as well. Similarly with this, newer agency for the automation stuff like mm -hmm. again the most recent video we did is like how you can do it or like what i'm doing like how you can do the same here's the model etc so uh, it's pretty much like building the public right yes yes very much very much yeah sure. and it's very interesting to uh like see the videos like this because uh, i mostly spend my time in twitter and like there are a lot of builders in public in twitter but it's uh, a bit different when you're doing a video so it's um, I appreciate this more because like you see like a real person, you see uh, how they like think, how they like even how they talk, like it's, it's like additional, uh, I don't know, <laughs> additional uh, edge like to the person. And that's what I'm uh, trying to do also with this podcast. Uh, I want to give like people uh, a face, like at least like a, a, a brand probably, because yeah. uh, everyone probably see them at the picture. And even if they see them on video, they won't recognize them. And it sucks. And in Twitter, like, uh, I think it's everywhere. Like, it's recommended not to change a profile photo. So it's just, like, one picture, like, for years, like, for a person. That's it. Wow. So it's pretty cool that yeah, you're doing these videos. And I love them a lot. So uh, you're sharing how you're building. You've shown it. So super. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, man. I think uh, I told you recently, but I think... I really enjoyed watching the video that you did as well. If anybody's watching, they should go check this one out. It's Igor's video on how to, uh, on like your start, your startup as a media company. I think that nice. video is so impactful. It's really, really, really good video. Really, really good. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's here. Well, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, I wonder how do you find this video? Is it through YouTube? Uh, da, 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 da. I found you through Twitter, then I stalked you oh, and found your YouTube, and then I nice. found the YouTube video I think, so. Nice, nice, thank you. Uh, okay, as for agencies, I know that uh, this switch from uh, Webflow design agency to the Coda wasn't uh, like 
uh, the accident. So uh, why did you switch it? I found the the more I talked about in my the things I talked about in my YouTube videos more than I did uh, uh, the things I talked about most in my YouTube videos were like uh, here's this great thing I built in Coda. Here's this new process slash system I built. Here's this new way I'm going to get clients. It was never like I just built a great website. Here's how to design a great website. And I realized more and more and more as I was kind of like pushing forward that I was enjoying building stuff in Coda more than I was building stuff in Webflow. And I was in, what, enjoying more like solving the problems of like friends having uh, process problems in their businesses and me kind of consulting them on how to fix it. And I was surprised at how clearly I could see it, but they kind of struggled to see like the system and process mm -hmm. kind of thing. Then I kind of found out that like actually, you know, there are people who are very good at designing. There are very people who are good at programming. And there's very good people who are good at going together workflows and how people work and systems and stuff like that. Yeah. So I happened, I happened to uh, contract for a friend here in Argentina um, who owned a web flow agency that was working for companies in America. And he said to me, can you have a look at like our internal processes and systems? Can you, can you come do a bit of consulting for us? So I did that. I really enjoyed the gig. Um, and then kind of made this decision of like, uh, I had two options really, like either carry on with the Webflow agency, which I've been enjoying for the last four years, but it was more like a, a lifestyle business than like growing it to anything like super big. Or I could give this newer agency a, uh, a go, which like aligned more with the kind of video content we were making. It aligned more with the idea that like, this is what we enjoy doing more. And it also aligned with the idea that like, uh, we could actually make products uh, out of um the stuff that we were doing like you know with webflow you create a bespoke website for a client nine times mm -hmm. out of ten you're not going to probably reuse that website uh, mm -hmm. for somebody else but like when we do like a new crm build for a client or something like that like there's lots of parts of that we could then sell on as like some sort of digital product later down the road so yeah it just felt a lot more fun you know like i, I wanted to wake up in the morning and work on that rather than the, the webflow stuff nice nice and uh, how much clients did you have in the Webflow agency in parallel and probably in total, just to understand the volume? Yeah, so like I think at the height of our subscription model, when we kind of switched to doing Design Joy, we had five clients that we were servicing uh, cool. at a time, um, which was hectic because I was the only designer uh, doing that. But like um, in comparison, now we're still quite small. We only have like three clients, but the difference is the enterprise. So they're much bigger accounts, much bigger teams, um, and a lot more exciting. Like there's a lot more to do, um, mm -hmm. especially when you're working with a company who's got like 200 employees. So you mm -hmm. don't really need to go and find like lots of small clients. Like mm -hmm. enterprise is the way for me. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. <laughs> Interesting. I enjoy enterprises and <laughs> the quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. And uh, how did uh, enterprises feel about like this subscription model? Because uh, it's probably like too new for them. Uh, are they scared? Uh, like, what are the questions? I think it's more about like um, one of the biggest things I get is like hours and hourly because they want to make sure that they're getting the value of what they're mm -hmm. paying for. Um, Brett from Design Joy, his course is really good. If uh, anybody wants to check it out, and I would really suggest. Um, checking out the section in the course, which is about uh, cadence of delivery. So oh, like nice. he sets himself up to deliver every 48 hours or something like that. Um, and he says, that's the reason that people pay the kind of price that they pay. It's for that delivery pace. Um, so I think as long as you can keep up with the client, they're pretty happy with it. Uh, what I tend to find the biggest question always is how many months do I need to subscribe for? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that sometimes that's like asking, answering, like, how long is a piece of string? Um, but if you can figure out, like, how to confine your process so you can give that kind of estimation, like, yeah, I think you're going to be subscribed for, like, three months or something like that. Usually mm -hmm. then they have a number in their head, like, okay, I'm bringing mm -hmm. spend, like, $9,000. Now I know what the budget is, you know. Yeah, it's very interesting. I didn't check uh, Brett's uh, course, but uh, I saw similar ones. Uh, um... I've I've read one from Jack Butcher. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you know this guy from Visual As Value, and he's really great also to spend this. Uh, but the reason why I reacted so much on cadence because it's something that we really also uh, pushing in the company. Like we want like every like process to deliver something in expected like uh, uh, time periods. 
and ideally this time period uh, should be uh, like every day so th yeah, that's yeah. the idea and uh, ideally even like multiple times per day because, because that's when it's become predictable controllable optimizable and stuff yeah, like yeah. that yeah yeah 100 how are you guys finding that at the moment uh so uh it's pretty tough uh, uh but uh we already uh, learned it for uh, in couple places so now we are uh, able to deliver like videos in under one day nice. and we can deliver multiple videos product videos and it took uh, us time and like suffering to do this like to create again like processes uh like um creating cards that explains uh how what to expect it to see in videos and stuff like that and now we're doing the same for uh designs and we also uh, we started from UX prototypes, and we set the two days delivery time. Uh, then we uh, did logos, and uh, uh, we are able to do logos now in four hours. <laughs> and okay. uh, uh, now we are doing like right now working on the legend page, um, uh, also templates. And the goal is also like to learn how to make a really uh, like solid uh, legend page, like uh, probably like in one, uh, one hour or two hours. Uh, just because we collect all the like these templates, components, so you just uh, dragging them over, like writing the copy, and you have a solid page. But it's super important to have cadence. You you right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it like it sets you up for such a good relationship with the client because like it incentivizes them to be quick as yeah. well, and it's just nice to have that momentum. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. And uh, that's also what I wanted to ask about, uh, like your YouTube channel. Uh, you said that in the beginning you made video almost every week. Uh, was it a goal, like to make a weekly, or was it occasional? Yeah, it was because I was like filming Monday to Friday every day in the office on on an iPhone, wow. um, just like you know shooting clips. And then I was <laughs> like, I want to try and get a video out every Monday. This is before I learn about the importance of having a series and being consistent with your content, but it probably helped with like my initial audience growth and like my initial mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, people watching the videos because they had something to tune into every Monday. And like, I knew that like out of the 15 minutes of bullshit of me talking, there'd at least be five minutes of like gold in there for them. And I, and I got that kind of feedback from the comments of like, yeah, this was good. This wasn't, um, it's only within the last year, really, that like the videos really kind of blew up. And I realized that I needed to try and be a little bit more like consistent with the format, which is why now like we might go two weeks between videos, mm -hmm. um, just because we want to really make sure that the quality of the video is really good and, and we can get something with uh, high views. Because um, you can nice. only survive for so long on a 100 view video <laughs> every week, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you become bored, I guess. <laughs> right. We need to see some traction. We need some go, traction. Go. And, uh, you keep saying we. Uh, do you have a team, or you you say me a we about you? Yeah. yeah no, uh, so I've got a video editor that works with me at the moment. He's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Helps me with a lot of the content uh, editing parts, and then um, I've got a coder engineer, uh, a chief of mm. operations, and uh, we've got a web flow engineer nice. as well as we still do the odd web flow bit and bits and bobs cool. every now and then so that's what i say uh, makes you be different from others because uh like people are too crazy about this like uh, design joy course and they keep doing like the same stuff uh, and it seems like most of them trying to do it alone but uh, i don't know like the reason uh, to do this uh, so it's great that you seems to be built like a system for your company not it's like uh, depending on yourself Great. I, think, I think the problem is, is like, you will get to a point where you're like Brett, where you just don't have time for anything else. Yeah. And I kind of do want a life <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, like, I don't want to be like doing 16 hour days. Um, one of the biggest lessons I think from doing like the five clients in the design joy, um, model design mm -hmm. agency I had was like, you, you just don't have time for anything else. Content, growing the business. You are literally just locked in delivering work five days a week getting paid mm -hmm. for it, but there's no real room for anything else, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, great, so uh, we discussed uh, really interesting uh, things. Uh, uh, so the agency, the YouTube, the cadence, uh, uh, how how to like uh, produce the QLT video, you mentioned that. So I think it will be cool uh, if you share like your process in this sense. And also, 
we'll try to make some accents on Coda uh, stuff as long as uh, you're doing it now. Uh, I guess you have like this uh, YouTube templates and stuff in Coda, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can crack it open if you want. I'll, um, cool, cool. So I'll let's let's do this. Let's switch the 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 show. Let's do it. Uh, okay, yay. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, as an intro, I'm really interested to see how you do these videos because uh, yesterday for this podcast, I recorded an intro. Uh, it uh, lasts just for a minute or something, but I spent like three hours and probably like 30 uh, different videos to, because I, uh, before I did it. So it's really tough and I wonder like how you do this. You also mentioned that yeah, like you're recording a lot of uh, like videos and then just uh, taking the best part. So it's also interesting. So let's see what you have here. So it's sure, auto, sure, right? Sure. right? Yeah, yeah. So um, just like a brief overview, like Coder is this great tool. It's a bit like Notion. It means I can like yeah, uh, cool. create elements and stuff. This is a dashboard that we made for uh, our own content. Code is great because I can pull in like our data from external uh, sources without using like any uh, Zapier or anything. So here I'm just like pulling in like our views so we can have like a little timeline of that. We also track subscribers so we can see like how we're doing in terms of subscribers gained and lost. Um, and then there's a few like, you know, product products and stuff. That's just data really just to keep us like on track and help us remind stuff. But mm -hmm. The core part of the process and the way that we do things is um, we use these cards. So uh, we'll submit cards and these might be like uh, a lot of the time it's people who have either asked for or commented on our videos and said oh, like, man. hey, we'd really love a video on this. One of the one of the things I think that like maybe a lot of people don't do is listen to their audience. But like when somebody says they would love a step by step video on how to start one, like, you know, do it. Yeah, I also <laughs> love probably, this video. <laughs> probably they're not. They're probably they're not the only one. Um, we tend to try and find like influencers who have done like similar videos. Mark nice. Tilbury is really well known in the business sort of thing, and he did this: how to make a a ten k a month start again. And then usually I'll put together some sort of a uh, like mock up thumbnail for my video editor to kind of use as like mm -hmm. his kind of the direction we want to go in. And uh, just talking about ideas again as well. So we do that. We also look at like what's happening in the current niche. Um, and then, uh, yeah, one of, one of the things I can really say like here off the top of my uh, top of the head, just from like looking at this thumbnail is like one of the things I kind of invested in like two weeks ago was I went to like a photo shoot, at a professional studio and paid like, I don't know, like 100 to 150 bucks for like just a load mm -hmm. of video, uh, photos like this. But it really makes the difference when making your, your YouTube videos. You can see here, like, here's a photo that I shot at home with, like, my mm -hmm. fucking cap on. And, like, you know, it's not super high quality, but, like, you know, you can really tell the difference. So if I can, like, yeah. convince anybody to go and get, like, some photos done for their content, I think it will really make the difference. Really make the difference. Yeah, but it's something um, that our uh, SEO, uh, SEO pushing, uh, he also like said that you need to have quality photos, you need to go quality videos, but I really like like to move fast. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm not always like taking attention, I mean, to quality in this sense. So I, I was trying to make the content uh, like interesting and engaging, but like the quality of video can suck. So it's uh, interesting yes. that you mentioned that, yeah. I mean, if you look at my current channel, like in regards to the photos I had and the photos I had now, like I was in a similar place of moving fast. Um, and I think at some point when you get that traction, it, it, it will naturally come that you upgrade the, the quality of your content as you kind of see the growth of it. Um, yeah. So yeah, like cool. we'll, just, we'll just vote on ideas. Those kind of get yeah. serviced. Um, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but... Uh, uh... One thing that I noticed like from other videos in Coda, so it seems like these reactions, it's like something big in Coda, right? Because I saw they use it in tables and stuff like that. So it's always like this thumbs ups, right? Uh, you mean in terms of just like general layout of this, of this dashboard or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, these reactions on the carrots that you ah. have. Uh, yes. I saw them in the multiple places. So it's like something common in Coda, right? Yeah, very common. Um, one of the things that you can do uh, that it, that we love doing and, and is a big ritual at Coda is it's called a dory. So 
Um, if you're ever having a team meeting, sometimes you don't know what the best thing is to discuss. But like, mm -hmm. what you can do with Adori is gather async questions. So like, where are we at with marketing? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where what, what's the status on X, etc. And then your team can come through and vote on these, and then nice. you know it gets yeah, reordered nice. as, as they get voted on. Meaning that when you come to like actually having the meeting, you can just talk about like the most important uh, topics at hand, mm -hmm. um, rather than like everybody kind of scratching their head and going like, "Oh, what's the agenda?" You know, or like, "Are we talking about the right thing?" Um, again, like, you can then collect sentiments on how the meeting went, so people can give you like their feedback mm -hmm. on like what, how they thought the call went. Uh, and I think it's just mm -hmm. like there's such a great feeling when you have a team of like five or more or even just like two or three people mm -hmm. and you're on a call and they're like filling in this table and everybody's like voting individually and it's all moving around and stuff you know but um you really surface the right questions and also by like giving people time to come and ask the questions before the call you tend to get better uh, like uh ideas because like mm -hmm. there's no shotgun I'm on a call, I need to give an answer mm -hmm. kind of vibe, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. No yeah, I just figured out, I just realized that we use in a similar way, uh, but in Notion. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. still use the Notion, old school Notion. Uh, but yeah, we have carrots uh, in different uh, uh, statuses. So basically Kanban board. And before we start the discussion, like everyone wants like, uh, to detect like cards that needs to be discussed. So How, it's cool. Yeah. But here it's uh, interesting. Do you find that like doing that format is productive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's really is when uh, you see like people engaged. Like nobody can slack like during this time. So everyone's like involved in this process. So I like it too. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, so yeah, like we do something similar in our in our video content where we just have these like reaction buttons to kind of filter the right kind of content to the top. Mm -hmm. um, once that's uh, also done, uh, I, I, I think I never saw in, in Notion uh, like the charts uh, like this. Yeah. So it seems like it's pretty unique to Coda, right? This is a big reason that I moved to Coda because I started with Notion as well, but they don't do charting. So like, quickly went on Google and I was like, how do I find a productivity tool that does charts? And like, Coda does it. Um, and how do you connect cool. it to the data source? Yeah, and it's quite cool because like you can change the type of charting as well. They've got mm -hmm. quite a few options from like uh, bars to to pies to to lines, you know, etc. Yeah. And then, as I said, like um, in the in the beginning, um, the uh, the data is being pulled directly from YouTube. So there's no uh, there's no need for me to like do any weird coding or anything like mm -hmm. that. I literally just go to like uh, their pack section, open oh, up YouTube okay. Studio, and then I can pull in uh, tables nice. with these. Uh, with these so it's like Z Zapier inside, like a Notion, right? So it's yeah, built they inside. just let you build in these these pre sync tables that have all of like your your kind of video content. So I can then just like, go to here. Nice. And... and I imagine like this uh, packs or whatever it calls, it's like a community-based thing so everyone can contribute their uh yes. yeah, yeah yeah they launched uh they launched like a year and a half ago the 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 pack stuff so um i've got like a few in here but like one a developer wrote one for gumroad there's one nice. for dali open ai i'm pretty sure there's one for the new the new ai model uh yeah claude by and yeah, from um, what I see, at least uh, to the moment, uh, like this is uh, pretty much the most powerful thing uh, so far. Because uh, yeah, it takes a lot of uh, burden. Like if you use Zapier, it means like you need to use something else. So I think Zapier today is pretty complicated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, it means uh, like if it takes a lot of time to configure one chart, it means you rarely will do this chart. And I hate yeah. it, so I'd better like add in these charts all the day long, like to see the data. <laughs> the kind of cool thing is like it acts as I like to call it like the glue of your SaaS apps because mm -hmm. it can connect to any of them. So like even though you might do your task tracking in Jira, for example, you could build a um, like a dashboard for the project manager inside Coda, mm -hmm. connect that to Slack, 
connect that to like your user feedback platform, connect that to your like support chat channel, you know, like your, your thing and, and really like glue all of these SaaS apps kind of together into one centralized yeah. hub, um, which I think we're all tired of having like 20,000 fucking Chrome tabs open up the top, right? Yeah. Like, wouldn't it be great if we could just have one and, and it just works, you know? Yeah. I wonder if you know the company called Fibery. Fibery. Uh, uh, I've heard of them, I think, actually. Yeah, that's uh, what they are uh, trying to solve. Uh, uh, so it's basically the same kind of tool, but they're known about like being too complex to understand. I guess like it's the same problem for Coda. Uh, so I think like it's hard to, for people to understand it. Uh, but uh, this uh, company Fiber is also pretty interesting in the way how they approach things. So take curious. a look. <laughs> yeah. Curious, curious, curious. Yeah, I've got them open at the moment. They, they, um, they seem really cool. Is, is it very <laughs> yeah, different? Yeah, I love it. It's and so they also have really great content uh, uh, blog, so I can recommend to everyone. So they put a lot of uh, thoughts into it. And Michael, it's uh, their CEO. Yeah. Nice. CEO. Cool, cool. Let's go back to Quota. I started to really love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you can connect like analytics from uh, like post hoc or other tools. Uh, I mean, from a website uh, or product yeah. analytics. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, let's see if they've got a product. Home yeah, let's see post hoc. Uh, we're using now. Hoc. Like yeah. this. Uh, hog. Uh, J. J. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, in okay, I will check later, but uh, I really interested. Yeah. So, the cool thing about packs is like you you can code your own, and you can have your own custom pack inside your document without it needing to be on the marketplace or accessible by anybody else. So, like mm -hmm. tying back to what we spoke about at the beginning, but like if you know how to code, and you know how to like write a bit of basic TypeScript, and the product that you have it has an API. Uh, mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, you'll be able to like bring the data in just using your own custom pack, um, and then you know the reward of that is if you've spent time creating your own custom pack to bring your data in, and you want to make some a little bit of money, you can then release that for the rest of the coder ecosystem to use, and mm -hmm. you get paid however much you decide to charge for for your pack. Uh, some packs charge one dollar a month per user. Some packs charge ten dollars a month per user. It, it really varies, but it, it's a great little way because it gives you uh, the opportunity to bring your data in. Um, sure. Faster. Yeah, I really like how you organize. Uh, are you a highly disciplined person or is it hard for you to maintain discipline? Um, I think I, I vary between the two. Uh, like I'll, I'll flip flop, but like um, when I have like a system like this, a dashboard like this to, to track and put mm -hmm. our process into place like you know uh it, it's a lot easier you know like how hard is it to follow a to-do list yeah. step by step you know what i mean yeah i used to be very like n not organized so i didn't have any discipline at all and only thanks to content twitter and stuff i started to like learn like to be disciplined started to understand why it's important uh, like again like to have cadence and stuff uh, and to improve to learn to analyze so that's interesting. Uh, let's probably click the other tabs, like a see Twitter, a content calendar. Uh, yeah, is so, there something yeah. interesting? <laughs> so like Twitter is just, I think, similar to you. I just realized I needed to start thinking, like start putting content into here that I can post later. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to post daily, but I'm also trying to like skew my content more towards like uh, to be more niche down. So like. Mm -hmm. I want to try and just post about building AI, being healthy, and then like my own personal interests rather than like about just about anything. Um, mm -hmm. We then have like a content calendar. So we try and like plan when we're going to post videos or like um, when like people are away and stuff just to give us an idea of like where we're trying to go. Um, nice. And then my video editor is great. So he'll usually like put bits of feedback down in, in these cards if there's anything that, that I need to improve on for the next video. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't added anything in a while, which which could, I guess, but, um, you know, just simple things like uh, keep the tripod level with your face, you know, like it's stupid, nice. it's simple, nice. but like, you know, sometimes you need somebody to tell you to do it, to, to 
No, no, it's great. It's great. I know all these like um, minor things. I tend not to write them down, but it's much better when they <laughs> actually like you. You can see them and recall them. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> I love yeah. It. Um, and then the, the the final thing is products. So we have a road. Um, we have a we have a Gumroad account that we sell like three digital products through. We don't actually charge for anything, but um, you know, made some paid sales, which is always good from free products. And um, we get like a good amount of downloads every month from like not really promoting these products, which yeah, is fun. Cool. So yeah. um, this is some, an area that we really want to grow this year. Uh, can you uh, probably show what the product is? Because yeah, so. Um, we have these like uh, different templates, oh, okay. nice, nice, nice. Um, which uh, if I can get a bigger picture up. Yeah. Uh, so like this is our most popular setting one. It's a client workspace built in Coda. It's like <laughs> very similar to the Trello board setup that mm -hmm. um, that uh, Brett has for Design Joy. So mm -hmm. if I share this tab. Um, what you can do is just have a, a shared dashboard for you and your client to do work together. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty cool because there's a few little like features in it that uh, that really add to the experience. For example, like um, we can you know report back on how many tasks have been done to the client. Uh, mm -hmm. When stuff gets put into review, it tells the client that it's ready for mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. We can leave async messages for them inside this this sort of messaging tool um, and then add ideas as well. So one of the things I realized with this, like um, this model was that the more that you can build up like a bank of like stuff to work on, the longer that subscription is going to last. And we <laughs> kind of want to try and increase like LTV of clients um, as much as we can. So like by collecting ideas, there's always like another project to work on after you've done the initial work kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so basically just, we create this template to kind of take all of our learning thing to use rather than like email or Slack or, you know, you know how yeah. things get, how messy things can get, right? If you don't have like a structure or a, or yeah. a place to communicate with, with your clients. Um, cool. So, so yeah. even keep, uh, sorry to, uh, so you even keep the um, communication with the clients inside the coda. Uh, you show some comments there. Yeah. So, um, so I'll come back. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, uh, we want everything to be completely async. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the key parts of that is having everything just in one place. So mm -hmm. this workspace template really is the home for the client. We'll do everything with them. From they'll do the onboarding where they'll submit their forms and, and get like, give us an idea of like what they want to have, um, have worked on. But then also they can go to this messages tab, uh, leave a message. So like, for example, I don't know, um, I'm out of office for the next two days. Mm -hmm. client. I will be out of office mm -hmm. for the next two days. Uh, I would then tag the client. Mm -hmm. uh, I can ping them and they'll get a notification. And then they'll just come to this messages bar and they'll, they'll see this in their inbox. Uh, so we don't need to use email or Slack with them. Then we just keep everything in this, in this workspace, you know, the theme really, if anybody's not got the gist of it yet, is like everything in just one place, you know, we don't want it to be spread across any other apps, just everything in one space, one hub, <laughs> one workspace client. Yeah, nice. I wonder how clients react on this. Like, do, uh, are they okay in like chatting, or are they uh, want to chat on Skypes? <laughs> yeah, some, <laughs> some, enterprise? some clients are great. Like, we're working with a company in uh, the Bay Area, and like, she's fantastic. She'll use this messaging part. She'll she'll come and submit tasks. Like, she's she's fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Another client that we have again in the Bay Area, like, they're great at submitting tasks. I've never had a problem with like clients. Mm -hmm using this part to submit submit tasks for us but um they still prefer to use email so yeah. we tend to talk to them about like the more nitty-gritty stuff via email but one of the things that we've been training clients a lot to do and staff and just like we've really been pushing this year is if a client emails you with like something about a task like directing them back to this workspace and saying mm -hmm. like can you please leave this as a comment in the workspace or can you please like add this as a task into the workspace because we're not going to do it if it's via email. 
because it's it, it it's just too much chaos yeah. you know to work out of an inbox yeah interesting but overall you don't see like that people hate this process so they adapt and so on it more than anything they enjoy it more because they're like what the fuck you've got a dashboard for me to use like you know no company yeah. has ever done that with us we're so used to emails and you know bullshit cool yeah, actually, I see already a difference with Notion. Uh, I also noticed the form there, right? So it's native uh, code form, or how yes. it works. Yeah, 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 just here. I wonder why Notion still don't have this form, but uh, it's a huge, like, missing piece there. So it's interesting that they have. I agree. Uh, I agree. And you can put this data to whatever table, I imagine, right? Or how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is literally actually just... Um... If you look at the underlying component, it, it is just a table, different table yeah. just in a different view in the form view. Okay, so it's similar to uh, Airtable, so that's what they do? Yep. I mean, in this sense. Yeah, but I love it. So, so it feels like an actual website, it's not uh, like a doc, so... Uh, it feels more like an app, I think, is yeah, the way yeah, we, app, try yeah, right. and, you know, we try and it sell is, it. Is it. Like, these are apps more than anything. Yeah, I can tell that I definitely will check Kota because... Um, I'm doing something similar like in my product, Momentum. So it's also kind of like a thing to replace a lot of tools and uh, really lots to, to learn like from all this. So yeah, cool. it's, yeah, it's really cool. Um, Interesting. Uh, there, there's a lot of cool native features, you know, like you can publish this form as a live link, for example, and then send that to whoever and like get, get inputs. Um, there's, there's a I, I like to tell clients and like just people that we work with when we're explaining code that like if you have an idea like you know nine times out of ten you'll be able to build like the whole mvp encoder and then if you really want to go further you yes. just then pay for a developer to to make it you know yeah that's a nice way to put it because it's definitely uh, especially for internal tools like it's 100 percent of things that you can automate I think yeah. the, the only problem with these tools is that they uh, don't have like custom design, but it's not a problem. Like it's by design. Like, uh, but overall, like you can build anything, right? Yeah, I, I, I think it, it, it's like for us, it's like if you want to go that far, custom design, custom development, and stuff. Like, there are benefits to doing it. It's really just a way up between like. Can your staff deal with the design language and the layouts of Coder, or mm -hmm. like, do you need something really super, super custom? You know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, can we go back to the uh, content stuff? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that was just like a, a a brief overview. But like, we're trying to push that kind of side of the business this year a bit more. So like, try and get some uh, uh, try and get some more comment like uh sales it'd be a really really cool really cool. Uh, can you click on the number uh on the dollars is it so it's also synced right yes yeah, yeah, yeah uh, that's cool. can you show how it looks so it's uh i wonder like how it's configured so if you want to add number sales right oh, so, okay so it's basically the this pack uh it just fill in the table and you just like showing something from table is how it yeah. works so what we're saying is get the sales table, then get all of the um, get all of the all of the different prices that people have paid. So this then outputs a huge list of of currency amounts. We got zero dollars, but some of them will be like they paid mm -hmm. a buck, some of them paid none. And then we then we just do like can you just sum that? So um, sum all the values together, and that gives us one hundred and forty eight and and twenty six cents. Um, mm -hmm. Very similarly, I could do like content ideas, and then I could get like all of the uh, all of the template or all of the mm. images attached to those to those ideas, and then you know they'll start out with something. Here. Yeah, I'm glad that I asked because uh, you showed really great part of this. So it's also like kind of Google shit stuff, like with this function. Yeah. Oh, but that the way that it displays media. Uh, I imagine it can be useful because it's something that we all strug were struggling uh, with Notion and video templates. So we wanted to have previews, but it was hard like to sync them. So it's really interesting. That makes sense. Uh, I mean, like, I haven't come up. To, I, yeah, I haven't come up against any problems with Coda in that kind of regard so far. Uh, cool, cool. 
yeah. let's probably uh, uh, switch topic a bit. Uh, going back to your YouTube videos, uh, I saw that uh, yesterday you also tested the uh, thumbnails for videos. Yes. I, I didn't even think that it was possible, so I wonder how you do that and how it works. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, let me switch to uh, the other tab. Um, let's go here. Uh, so we're using this tool called Thumbnail Test. It was made by a guy called uh, Rory, I think, on, on Twitter. He actually just sold it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's a really handy tool because um, what you can essentially do is, uh, and as it says, is you select one of the videos that you've worked on. Let's say I want to select the, like the latest uh, 10K a month one, how to make money online. Uh, we have a thumbnail test, so like, you know, thumbnail only, title only, and then we have like thumbnail and title. So let's say I want to switch that. Nice. Um, and then after that, you can upload your images and your different title combos and, and kind of set up the test like that. And then after that, you you modify the test. What's interesting is uh, the data that comes in. So like yeah. uh, what I can show you is some of our past tests. Um, so in this case, for example, uh, we wanted to know A, what title performs better and then B, um, what thumbnail performs better as well. So we gave it four combinations to run mm -hmm. um, every hour. And it's quite interesting because um, although, you know, this one has a, a higher CTR, so the, mm -hmm. so the only thing you can see in YouTube is the click-through rate, but it won't help you by collecting all of this other data. So although this had a higher click-through rate, mm -hmm. we can see that this one has a higher average view duration Mm. Although this one has uh, more impressions, uh, we can see that this one has a higher average mm -hmm. view percentage. So what it will do really is it will help collate all of the different data points and then help you mm -hmm. kind of find the winner. So probably you had some uh, cases when uh, there was like a really clean winner from this data or is it like uh, always kind of similar uh, numbers it, it really depends um if i look at like one of our previously uh previous ones you can see it was still kind of close with uh uh like this how to make a 10k one um mm -hmm. one of the things that was really interesting was when we first did the test for this i was convinced that uh I made 180,000 a year business in three months. Here's how it would be like the clearer winner. But mm -hmm. you can see here how just by testing the thumbnails, um, we got so many more impressions uh, mm -hmm. and like reach. So yeah, interesting. It, it's not just about like, uh, like how many people Super. click through, but also mm -hmm. like how far does that video get shown to like the wider pool. Yeah. Um, interesting. So, uh, so it seems like YouTube promoting these titles, or why it happens? From from the basis of what I've what I'm picking up at the moment on the data is like a lot of our views are browse. So it's like um, you go to mm -hmm. if we go to YouTube.com right now, and and you'll see all of these like uh, different tiles here, right? So mm -hmm. and it, usually what happens is like I'm like okay this moist critical video looks really good. The thumb thumbnail and the title look really interesting. I'm mm -hmm. going to click it or like, I don't know, uh, this one about the DJ. Oh, I want to watch that. I'm going to click it cause it's really interesting. And that that's cool to browse. Um, that's, that's cool. Getting your view, your views from, from the browsing. So yeah. what we tend, what we tend to find now is the better that title and thumbnail combination, the more browse views we get. And then if the video quality, like the actual content of the video, uh, not only matches that thumbnail and title, but it actually gets people to watch for like a longer period, then uh, we tend to find that the video then gets boosted in views. So like, although it's very important here that like we choose a thumbnail and a title combination that gets uh, people like to click through, we also want to mm -hmm. make sure that we're optimizing for this like average view duration. So we want mm -hmm. them to be watching the video. Otherwise, like, you know, 
what's the point? <laughs> Misleading <laughs> title. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I heard this great quote uh, that uh, there's no clickbait titles, uh, there's only clickbait co content. So yes. <laughs> if you yeah, don't yeah, deliver, yeah. it's a clickbait. <laughs> and I think I think YouTube had a really bad problem back in the day where they like rewarded people on having like clickbait thumbnails and titles, uh, regardless of what the content of the video was. Mm -hmm. So you tend to find that you would have a lot of these like really clickbait thumbnail and titles, but like the content of the video wasn't very good, but like the, the creator was never like punished for that. But nowadays, mm -hmm. like you really need to like focus on, and I think it's like why there's like a lot of retention optimizing yeah. and stuff, but like you really need to optimize for like people to watch your video as well. So yeah. like these tools are great, but if the content of your video sucks, like you need to sort that out first before, uh, yeah. before actually like doing these kind of tools. But we just started using this and you know it's been really good so far uh it's helping it's yeah yeah and it sounds uh similar to seo like how it works so uh yeah, google also monitors like how much time you spent on the page and if people drop they will punish like this page and put them down so it yeah. seems like the same for youtube videos yeah 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 yeah, yeah. exactly exactly um so the metric for this is the average uh, like video duration, right? Uh, view duration. It is, and and also like that advanced CTR number that they give you. So um, uh -huh. you know, usually you base your thumbnails like how well they're doing based on their CTR. So like mm -hmm. this one over here's got got a ten percent CTR, and you would mm -hmm. think, oh, that's really good. But actually, what we're looking for is this uh, advanced CTR, mm -hmm. as it's a number that's generated based on like. How many impressions did you get? How many views did you get? How, you know, like it's a collation of data mm -hmm. um, to give you a better yeah. idea. Okay, I also have questions. So when you need so like, to record a new video or you recorded it, how do you come up with the title and thumbnail? So do you have some collection uh, for inspiration or how it usually happens? Uh, yeah, great question. I'm gonna switch back to the, to the social yeah, media good. tracker. I can show you how we're doing, how we did it for a recent one. So should you open mouth on, on these thumbnails in order to yeah. be clicked? You know, what's funny. I, I saw it like, um, like jokes aside, like I saw a video by Mr. Beast. And if you look at all of his recent thumbnails, yeah. oh. his, mouth, his mouth's actually closed. Oh, uh, because he saw a, he saw a massive increase in views when he had a closed mouth. Uh, so keep your okay, mouth closed. Yeah, keep the no. map closed is, I guess, the tip there. Um, if I go to archive, and then I go to YouTube scripts, this is how we did it before we kind of put it into cards. Uh, so what we'll do, I guess this is a oh, nice example, is um, we'll, we'll go around and, like, try and find a bunch of thumbnails or, like, similar videos to the kind of video mm -hmm. we want. So the basis of it is, is we come up with an idea, like, you know, how, like how to get how to get more clients you know mm -hmm. um then we'll go look at creators that we like so like ali abdul mm -hmm. is a great example yeah. of a creator mm -hmm. that we think does very well um this guy called ed from film booth if you want to get mm -hmm. tips on how to run a youtube channel he's really good and then like nice. um iman Gadsi, again like top of the top of the pool at the moment for like business content on youtube so we'll have a look yeah. at their like thumbnails to get like a general idea of what kind of thumbnail we want to do. And then it's literally just like, it's banging out like 10 titles or mm -hmm. 20 titles and then cutting that down and figuring out like, which one do we think is going to be the best? But again, like, uh, although we, we, we try to pick one that we want to kind of run with first, we're quite, mm -hmm. uh, bullish on using this tool now to kind of decide like which one really is the best so it's better to come up with like lots of ones to try i guess rather than like just trying to pick one and hoping that that works oh. um and did you also uh, have uh, scripts here yeah so, so i was gonna Can say like script? what we then do after that is like um we'll try and we'll try and put this into uh, what we call like a hook, uh, a resolution, and a, conf a hook, re conflict, resolution, and an outro hook. So cool. um, basically the hook is like, you know, 
getting them, getting their interest, telling them what we want to, what, what we want to tell them, like why they should watch the video, you know, just like, gem, you know, just general hook, like here's what you should do, come in and get, come in and try it out. Um, mm -hmm. The conflict is always like something that's not going well. So like, let's say for example, the hook is like, you're not getting any clients anymore at the moment. Like getting clients is really hard. Like we know that's really hard. In this video, we're going to show you how to get clients. Then mm -hmm. like the conflict is like, Right now, I'm trying to grow my agency. We need more clients. We're making no money. So you're building a story. You're building up mm -hmm. like a, a reason for them to watch. Like, oh, Harry's not getting any work. Um, that's a problem. And then like the resolution is like, how is that problem solved? Or how did you solve it? So it would be like, so I started cold calling 20,000 companies. And after <laughs> calling 20,000 companies, I managed to get on a call with one company. And after talking to that company for a day, I managed to get four thousand dollars from them, and you can see how like you've gone from yeah. the hero going through that conflict and like struggling to something positive happening. And like this resolution part, it could be that you got a deal, but like even if you called twenty thousand people and you didn't get a deal, like something would have come out of that. You would have learned something along the way, you know, of that journey mm -hmm. uh, of doing something. And then an outro hook. So we always try and. Um, we, we always try and like figure out uh, how to push them to the next video because mm -hmm. YouTube is so watch time heavy and mm -hmm. they really like to prioritize channels that are keeping people on the platform and watching more videos. Mm -hmm. You want to try and create like a binge worthy series. So what you'll tend to find at the end of every single one of my videos is you'll see me going, uh, I'll say something along the lines of like, this is all great and you know you will learn lots of stuff from this video but if you really want to learn about how to get your first twenty thousand dollar client i would watch this video next mm -hmm. and then you push mm -hmm. them to the next video in your catalog so they continue binging your your series and then youtube goes oh this is a really good channel like people are watching it loads we're gonna push more viewers to to their videos nice yeah, it really makes a lot of sense. And uh, do you also place these uh, links to the video in the middle of the video? Uh, I mean, these pop-ups and stuff? Always. Or is it the usually in the end? Always at the end, because I'm trying to optimize for them to watch the whole video and then move on to the next video in our mm -hmm. in our series. Yeah. Uh, and keep yeah. going like that. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense to, again, to compare it to SEO. So that's what you should do. You should interlink content and you should strive people to click uh, through content, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, creating a bingeable series is really good because once somebody's watched like three or four of your videos in a row, like YouTube really does like highlight that and they're like, okay, we're going to boost them now and like give them a lot of views but also like it ties back to that whole thing of like creating valuable content you want to create a bingeable series that like is also giving enough value that like you get those mm -hmm. kind of people who like I, i've had messages from subscribers who are like dude i've just watched your entire catalog like you know all 60 videos from when you're in your garage at the beginning to like right now and like you know <laughs> every video gave me loads of value and i'm really happy and like and you know like that's I think that's the kind of audience you want to cultivate rather than the one which is like you know they're just watching the old video and it's not they're not really getting like invested in you you know you want fans that are invested in Eagle fans that are invested in Harry like fans that are invested in like the people who are watching this you know Interesting. yeah and I also love this structure uh, it's also something that I'm using in my works so the way uh, how I found uh, the easiest way like to come up with a copy for a website something is uh, always like to uh, seek for the change like yes. well, who like the client was in the beginning and uh, what they will get with the product so it's what you're like the story also saying like conflict and how do you resolve this conflict so it makes also a lot of sense and one of the things that i'm also uh, using often is uh, like uh, this thumbnail is before after it's mm. really a great pattern, I believe. Like uh, it shows really the value in the concise matter. Uh, so I believe like these uh, thumbnails are pretty popular, like uh, showing like the change too, right? I see the guy also with the change here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it seems to be this trend right now where you like show like what are the effects of actually doing the shit that you're talking about in the video, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Showing the people what they want. <laughs> And when you're doing this thumbnail, so uh, you mentioned you better have a professional photo. Uh, what else would you recommend, like for the thumbnails? 
Um, really think about like uh, like your ICP, so like your ideal client profile or like your, your ideal customer. Like what do they want um, to watch? What are they really interested in? And then again, like create a thumbnail that they're going to click on. Um, mm -hmm. So like professional photo, uh, using elements like text um, to help like uh, to expand on your title. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll be like, um, do this to make your first 10K on, uh, or not that, like that. they'll do like um, how to make money online. And then the text that they'll put in the actual thumbnail image is how to make money online as well. But like, you can do so much more than that. The title could be how to make money in a, in a, in a month or how to make money online. And then in mm -hmm. the thumbnail, it could be like uh, $20,000 in one year. You see how you can like, double the use case of both them rather than like mm -hmm. repeating yourself um, yeah, professional photos uh use elements to help expand on the title or the content um really focus on quality it's your packaging so like it's going to be the reason that you get twenty thousand views or a hundred views you really got to make sure and uh, don't don't do what some youtubers do which is like they'll do they'll use the exact same fucking thumbnail for every video but they'll just change the text mm -hmm. in the thumbnail oh, okay. you know like and and as well as that like try and keep some sort of consistency because when you go to your youtube channel and you see all of your thumbnails like it really helps that like an audience member can land on your channel and immediately understand this is what this person does or this is the kind of content that they put out but if you have lots mm -hmm. of random different videos and lots of random different thumbnails and titles and stuff like it really, it really doesn't help somebody understand, like, should I subscribe to this person or not? You know, are they, are they worth my subscription? Yeah. Great advice. Uh, I even wrote something down to, because yeah, really important. And to, what is important to understand is what you said that uh, your title and thumbnail, what makes your video, because it's, it's the same, like in the articles and stuff that, if your title sucks, if your interest sucks, like uh, the rest of the title uh, articles will likely also not be read. Uh, yeah. So it's valuable advice. The, the content can be absolutely fantastic. You could have like a yeah. fucking Hollywood director direct it, you know, and it'd be the best. But like, if the packaging of it, like you know, the thumbnail and the title aren't great, then you won't get any views uh, at yeah. all. And I also love this advice not to use the same uh, like template for uh, every uh, thumbnail. I can tell my story how I learned it. So we used to have like workshops in our office uh, back to like before pandemic, uh, and uh, <clears throat> we started to make like these cool uh, paper posters in the office about workshops. And first, like designers, they use the same template, and I just uh, didn't notice the difference. So I came up to the office and I. Think that it's the same workshop that it was before. I don't understand that it's a new workshop. So that's what happened, and probably with thumbnails too. Like when you see, like, a, I probably already watched this video. So uh, that's what yeah. you think. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's um, everything that I've learned is, or nearly everything that I've learned um, so far is from this guy here called called Ed from Film Booth. Mm -hmm. If if any, if you want to get like more advice or anybody else who's watching like Film Booth on YouTube. He's also got a second channel creator booth. Um, he's got some really good insights uh, about that. I think like YouTube uh, and like the career of being like a YouTube consultant is quite mm -hmm. a new thing, but there's more and more guys popping up on YouTube nowadays who have worked with these like really big creators and are willing to give like some great advice. Cool. Uh, I guess you now can do a YouTube consulting. We already have a video for you to promote. Uh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I mean, if anybody's watching and they want like advice, just DM me on Twitter. I'm happy to like share ideas and stuff, you know. Yeah, I actually saw uh, some podcasts and uh, with, the, I forgot this name, but it's a huge like LinkedIn uh, uh, creator. And he went there and he showed his, uh, the same way like you're doing now. He just uh, shared his notion with all the template stuff and the guys were wow it's it's like huge it's so cool can you share it and eventually he launched a paid product and he used this video as a like a ad for, for this uh, video for this series <laughs> so if you want to become a youtube consultant now you have content yeah, yeah. chat clip this clip this please <laughs> chat thanks <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, thank you so much. I think uh, I think we watched enough. Uh, I learned like a lot, so made a lot of uh, uh, notes. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, it's clear that you're doing it uh, analytical way. So I ask a lot of questions. I really enjoy see people like when they organize and stuff and doing something following science. So yeah. really cool, Harry. No, thanks um, for having me, Igor. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, and... one, one last thing. So uh, what would you like to promote or? <laughs> Uh, what you're working on right now. So the, your main focus is uh, like this uh, AI um, automation agency, right? Yeah. So I guess like if anybody's watching and they feel like the operations of their company could be doing better or they're spread across like multiple SaaS apps, paying lots in monthly subscriptions, um, we can help you kind of consolidate everything into one hub, reduce the amount of SaaS applications you're using so you can build your own internal tools. This drives a better productivity at work because you're not spread across multiple things. Uh, reduce costs because you can rebuild these tools internally for a fraction of the price and save on a lot of money monthly. Um, and uh, yeah, if, uh, if none of that sounds interesting to you at all, uh, I would love you to go check out the YouTube. Um, subscribe to us on there, uh, Harry Roper. Uh, we release free coder products every now and then. Um, so if you don't want to work with a service provider to help build so it was internally, you can probably copy one of our coder templates and just customize it for your own needs as well. So no pressure on that. Awesome. And I love how you pitch it. Uh, you have it uh, like in your brain probably already because you pitch it also through like problem solution. Yes. I don't know if you even mentioned like you have a lot of like stuff. It's all in different places. You just like bust with all of this. Now it's all in one place and you save a lot of money. And yeah. I can confirm actually. So it's not a bullshit because uh, we're using Retool, like uh, in our company project for automating back offices. I think it's uh, now, I think it's less powerful than Coda, but it still like uh, does a great job. And we really like saved a lot of time and a lot of money uh, for our clients because like nobody wants like to build like a back office panel, like with the code, uh, including like developers. So it's really great that these tools appear and uh, they really work and uh, real company use it. Uh, and uh, the ones who use it, they save money and move faster. So yeah. definitely can confirm. <laughs> I, I just want to accelerate technology use in corporate America. I think we're still using like a lot of old tools and a lot of old processes and stuff. And yeah. there was this great period when we had like the initial like uh, code revolution where like a lot of companies built uh, their own internal systems. We then, we then called those like archaic uh, like traditional systems because they were written with like a lot of code and like they were really hard to maintain. So we moved to SaaS. Now I think with the dawn of no code and like the, the commoditization of development and like it being a lot cheaper, uh, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to now do that again and like rebuild your own tools and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can also add here because we, we kind of live in the bubble. I think is the same for you, the same for me. So we are like um, uh, used to speak with people who use like the modern tools like AI, they like know what's happening in the world. So we tend to think that like the whole world already there. Yeah. But ask your friends, like not uh, not every one of your friends knows about ChatGPT, like to start with. Not every one of your friends, they, they can use Notion. They don't know what Crazy. code is. They probably don't know no code, like term. Uh, that's what I found out. Like when I was posting articles, like no code tools, uh, I always got like questions, what is no code? Like even mm. today, like, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, really important to understand that you didn't like miss some like hype. So it's, uh, it's on the beginning. So AI won't replace like uh, developers like today or tomorrow or in three years and in 10 years, because like uh, huge companies with billion dollars, they are running on like <laughs> on the very legacy software, probably like even Cobalt or stuff. So, uh, you have a lot of opportunity here and speaking about opportunity, I think it also will be valuable if you give advice for, uh, probably beginner. Uh, designers, uh, agencies, like people who uh, watched Brett's course and now yeah. wants to build another subscription agency, what would you recommend them to do? Um, don't try and go and get like five clients subscribing at like $2,500 a month straight away. Like you really need to test out the system. If you're a beginner, I would just focus on one client and getting used to that A, cadence of delivering stuff consistently, but B, at a high quality as well. Um, really think about the long term. So if you want to just do this solo, like go with Brett's system. If not, and you want to do it with a team, uh, really think about how you're going to build a system around that. I think you said Eagle, like, right? Like it took you guys a while to get to that point where you were able to 
as a team deliver stuff on like a daily basis yeah. but um really figure that out uh start small uh buy brett's course it, there's some good insights in that watch my video uh pay me lots of money to consult you to do it i don't know <laughs> uh, but like the, the the basis of it is i think is like um start small and then go big i think a, a lot of, a lot of people will try and go and get like five contracts without really focusing on like the process and the delivery part if you can really <laughs> nail that it's very scalable then to take on lots and lots of clients yeah it's a very good advice and also focusing on one client uh, gives you a benefit that they probably will love you and they will refer yeah. it and that you actually solve something for one them of, because yeah one of my biggest regrets i think at the beginning was like i was just focused on building good looking websites i was focused less on the case study and the results of the client mm -hmm. but if i just like had that switch in my head at the very beginning of my career like if you do a great job for just one client and you focus on just building up their business as much as you can and like really providing a lot of value like the results that they get will really help with that next sale and especially if you can get a case study which is like we free x their sales for example on their landing page or like we increase their conversion rate by like 25 percent like those kind of like metrics then are like really valuable when it comes to selling to the to the next client yeah and i also want to say like everyone who just heard this and uh, think it's obvious uh, show me your case studies show me your testimonials show me your projects you likely don't have anything published like think yes. about it's really because like everyone like uh, think they know this stuff but nobody like has case studies or even portfolio on their websites yeah <laughs> and, and and even so like they they focus more on like how good looking their design projects are rather than like what are the actual business use cases and like clients yeah they want a great designer but they also want a designer who like can do that strategy uh give them like a uh, confidence they're gonna get like some sort of business result you know they want to make money they don't want something that looks <laughs> great they want to make money at the end of the day yeah that's true okay thank you so much harry again it was super like fruitful conversation i learned a lot learned a lot about youtube creation and uh, learned a lot about coda understand how i can use for my use cases a really great advice on writing agency like show uh, your skin in the game so I definitely can confirm that Harry is legit. <laughs> so uh, for everyone, uh, definitely follow his channel. I enjoyed his videos. So that's how we met. Uh, I watched his videos and I really wanted to jump on a call. So they're energetic. They are full of value. Uh, the same as this call. So thank you so much, Harry, again. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Do it in public. You have nothing to hide. Start using the internet. Join the right.